Well, brothers and sisters, hello. I'm, uh, I'm very happy to be here for the last ministry meeting of the semester on the topic of the Glorious Church. Um, <coughs> how many of you have either online or here live seen every message this semester? Okay, a few. Now, we've, we've had 11 messages. How many have seen the majority of the messages? Okay, a lot more. That's good. That's good. So many have seen the majority of the messages. Well, you know, the first message this semester on the topic of the glorious church began before time. In eternity past. Before anything. And we saw that God had something hidden in his heart. And this deep desire that was hidden in God's heart was to have the church. A group of people created in His image, according to His likeness, that are filled with Him as life, that express and represent Him on this earth. A people who He could love and in whom He could find rest. And a people who in return would love Him and find rest in Him. So this semester we've seen uh, so much related to the church, related to these different aspects. Well today, in the last message, on the topic of the glorious church, we will look forward into eternity future. To see what is the consummation, what is the conclusion of this desire that was hidden in God's heart. Does God gain what he's after? And what does it look like? What does the Bible show us? The answer to all of these questions is wrapped up in the new Jerusalem. Um, the New Jerusalem is presented in the last two chapters of the Bible, Revelation 21 and 22. But the New Jerusalem is not only uh, the ending or the conclusion of the book of Revelation. It is also not only the conclusion to the New Testament. But the New Jerusalem is the conclusion of the entire Bible from Genesis to Revelation. All of the 66 books of the Bible, beginning with the Old Testament, with God's creation, with man's fall, with God calling out a chosen race, the formation of the nation of Israel, and all of their dealings, as well as the New Testament, beginning with John the Baptist, the life and work of Jesus Christ, His perfect humanity and human, human living, His redemptive death on the cross, His resurrection and ascension, the formation of the church, the salvation of the individual believers, including you and myself, the growing and the building up of the body of Christ, the Lord's second coming, his dealing with and terminating God's enemy, Satan, and the passing away of the old heavens and the old earth. All of this concludes, consummates, and climaxes with the new Jerusalem. Amen. This is wonderful, the new Jerusalem. Uh, she is the goal of God's eternal purpose and the crystallization of all the work that God has done throughout the ages. Now you might have noticed I use the word she in relationship to the New Jerusalem, and I use that word on purpose. We'll get into the meaning of this a little bit later. In order to really appreciate and to begin to understand the New Jerusalem, uh, we cannot interpret it according to our natural ideas and concepts, or according to 
uh, even religious superstition. We need to come back to the pure Word of God. In order to understand the New Jerusalem, we need to see the crucial importance of the first verse in the book of Revelation in which the New Jerusalem is presented. And this is the first verse on our verse sheet today. So how about we just all read this verse together. Revelation 1.1. 1, 1. Go. The revelation of Jesus Christ, which God gave to him to show to his slaves the things that must quickly take place. And he made it known by signs, sending it by his angels to the slave John. Now I want you to circle the word signs in this verse. This verse shows us that the revelation that was given to the Apostle John was made known to him by signs. In the Bible, a sign is a symbol which has some spiritual significance or meaning. For example, two weeks ago David came and shared with us a message on the seven golden lampstands in the book of Revelation. And we saw in this message that according to Revelation 1.20, the seven golden lampstands are the seven churches which were in Asia. The symbol of the seven golden lampstands points to the seven churches in Asia. Now we realize that the churches are not actual, physical golden <laughs> lampstands. This is just a sign pointing us towards some reality. Another example is shown in Revelation chapter 5 where Jesus Christ is presented as a lamb. Now brothers and sisters, Jesus Christ is not an actual little lamb. He's not literally a lamb. This is also a sign. In John chapter 1, Jesus Christ is presented as the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Jesus Christ is the one who offered himself as a sacrifice on our behalf to redeem us. This is the significance of the sign of the Lamb, that Jesus Christ is our Redeemer. Just as the Lamb is a sign... Just as the seven golden lampstands are a sign, the New Jerusalem is also a sign in the book of Revelation. It's very easy because in the Bible the New Jerusalem is called the Holy City to inject our natural thought that it is a physical city that we are going to. But today we want to come back to the pure Word of God to see how the Bible itself presents the New Jerusalem. Um, first, let's consider the name, New Jerusalem. I think as believers, we have a bad habit of taking the Bible for granted and taking the words of the Bible for granted. We kind of just read through and <coughs> inject any of our thoughts or concepts on what the words mean. So let's first begin with the word, with the name, New Jerusalem. Why is it called new? Why is the word new used in the name New Jerusalem? 